I just broke a huge personal record. I made $1,000 per hour as a blockchain developer. So I'm gonna tell you how I did that in this video and reverse engineer the process so that you can steal some of these ideas and use them for yourself. All right, so hey, if you're new around here, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, uh, you might know that you know, I'm a freelancer. That's how I do projects as a blockchain developer. People come to me for you know, short-term jobs and they pay me to do those jobs. And I'm gonna tell you about how I just finished a project where I made $1,000 per hour, okay? And really quickly, I'm not saying any of this to brag. I'm doing it to show you what's possible in blockchain because I firmly believe that it's one of the hottest fields uh, in tech right now. And I'm gonna show you some ways that you can you know, capitalize on this opportunity yourself. And in case you didn't see my last videos, my new program, Blockchain Mastery University, is coming out on January 29th, 2020. I'm gonna be inside of there personally helping you crush your goals as a blockchain developer. And we'll be talking about stuff like this, you know, how to uh, break into the blockchain industry, become a freelancer, get a job, code help, whatever you want, we're gonna talk about it. All right, so how did I make $1,000 per hour? Well, let me tell you the story. So when I started out my career as a programmer, uh, I was a freelancer. That's how I started in the first place. Okay, I've had a regular developer job and also just freelancing experience, but that's how I started and that's what I do now. And I think my hourly rate was maybe like 50 to $65 per hour on my very first project. And as I raised that and started working on other projects, you know, I was doing traditional web development, you know, full stack development. Um, and I always saw this cap, right? Like it was really hard for me to make like more than a hundred, hundred and twenty-five dollars per hour. And that always bugged me because like when I moved from maybe like fifty dollars an hour to like a hundred, hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour, it didn't matter if I kept getting better, like I was still gonna be capped at that level. So if I was ten times as good as I was when I first started out, you know, making fifty dollars an hour, it didn't make sense that, you know, I was only making about twice as much. So I was trying to figure out ways to like fix that. Like, how do I break past that? How do I earn more for the actual value that I offer? And so I read lots of, you know, blogs online or other people talking about, you know, how to increase your freelancing rates, how to command more. And the overwhelming uh, answer that I got from almost all of them were two things, all right? So I'll pull this up on my whiteboard here. The first one is specialization. And the second one is a value-based pricing. And these are the two things that I implemented uh, in order to, you know, make it possible for me to make $1,000 per hour. So when I was getting into blockchain, I saw a huge opportunity to make more money, right? The average salary seemed to be higher than other programming fields. Uh, and also I saw this opportunity to implement some of these freelancing strategies that I'm talking about to make more money. So, you know, why is that? Well, because the demand for blockchain developers is really big. Like all these companies are trying to build blockchain solutions but the number of people who know how to do it are very small, all right? So you can position yourself as a specialist who solves the same kinds of problems over and over again as a blockchain developer. And whenever you do that over and over again, you're able to provide more value uh, to a client. So that's what I started doing when I was a freelancer in blockchain, right? I started out doing hourly rate work um, I wanted to test out to see if I can make more money. So I can't remember what the first projects I did were. I probably priced my hourly rate kind of low uh, just to see if I could get the work. And I got the work. Uh, but eventually, you know, I raised it to like $150, $200 per hour. And then I eventually just stopped doing hourly work altogether. I just started doing fixed price projects. All right. So here's why I did this. All right. And this is a secret that I want to let you in on is most clients who wanna hire you as a freelancer for a short amount of time, they don't care what your hourly rate is. All right, so before you like freak out and bounce and leave this video and just like disagree with me and like leave hateful comments, let me clarify that. They don't care about the hourly rate as much as the value that you provide, okay? They're gonna see you like an investment. If they're gonna hire you for a short amount of time, it's because they're trying to achieve some goal in their business. And they say, all right, if we hire this person and they create this thing, what kind of return do we expect on that? How much money is it gonna make? And they're just gonna do an ROI calculation. And honestly, like, they just wanna know what it costs. They wanna put that in their spreadsheet and say, if we spend X, it's gonna make us Y, okay? So they don't care what your hourly rate is. Um, and honestly, they don't want you to just say it costs X number per hour 
and I don't know how long it's going to take me, right? Like a lot of clients will just bounce if they hear that. And that's one of the reasons I moved to a fixed price uh, model. All right. So I'm going to show you this, like that's where it goes, this idea of value-based pricing, because it's not about the amount of work done, like in terms of hours, it's by the amount of value delivered. So I'm going to repeat that so that it sinks in because a lot of people have a hard time with this. It's not about the amount of work done. It's about, it's about the amount of value delivered, right? There's a story about, um, you know, this factory that has this massive uh, machine that is part of their assembly line, right? And it's broken. And there's like thousands of workers who can't work uh, because the machine is broken. And they call in a specialist and the specialist comes in and listens to it, right? And he takes a hammer and knocks the machine, and it instantly works, all right? And then he gives a bill to this uh, company that's like $50,000. And they're like, what? This is crazy. You were only here for five minutes. And he's like, yeah, but that $50,000 is for knowing where to knock on the machine in order to make it work again. And that's what specialization is all about, is having very potent knowledge that allows you to solve problems in a short amount of time that deliver a really high value. It's just like a surgeon. You can go in and get a surgery done in 30 minutes that costs a ridiculous amount of money because of the cost required to do the surgery and the skill of the person who's doing it, the amount of value that's provided in the procedure itself. And that's the strategy I started using after I got into blockchain uh, and got some experience, right? I stopped doing hourly work and started doing fixed price projects. And that's allowed me to charge a lot of money for projects that don't take me very long to do, like maybe a week. And sometimes those projects are like 10, 15, 20, $25,000. And on this last project, I just broke my personal record and made $1,000 per hour. So how did I do that? Well, I made use of both of those tactics that I talked about, you know, specialization and value-based pricing, all right? Specialization because whenever the client came to me, they said, I want, you know, blank problem solved. And then they asked me how much it costs. All right, so I'm gonna talk about what the problem here is here in a minute, all right? But notice that they just say, how much does it cost? They never say, what's your hourly rate? I mean, sometimes people do, but most of the time the client says, how much is this gonna cost? How much is it gonna cost? So I gave them a price and they agreed to that price. They didn't ask me how long it was gonna take of my time. I gave them a delivery date, but they never said like, how many hours is this gonna take you? They just care about the value. And that goes back to that second problem, right? Value-based pricing. And I don't think it would have went as well uh, if they'd said, how much is this gonna cost? And I say, oh, $1,000 per hour. And I'm not exactly sure how long it's gonna take me. So instead, it sounds better to say how much is going to cost and you give them a price that you know is not going to take you very long and you don't necessarily care about what your hourly rate is going to be. You just know it's going to be a lot higher than if you would charge on an hourly basis. That's honestly a more fair pricing model for you as a developer if you're really good, right? That goes back to that frustration I talked about at the beginning of the video where I felt like I couldn't break past this like, $100, $125 hourly rate when I was doing regular software development before I got into blockchain. And kind of when I got into blockchain, you know, I started testing out some of the higher hourly rates uh, to see, you know, what's possible and also moved to this value-based pricing, uh, which has worked really well. All right, so that is how I did it. That's how I made $1,000 per hour, broke my personal record. So again, I don't say any of this to brag. I just want to show you what's possible uh, because I truly believe that blockchain is one of the hottest programming fields out there. And these are ways that you can capitalize on that opportunity, right? When people hire blockchain developers, they have all these ideas of what they want to do. They're gold miners seeking an opportunity. And if you're a developer, if you're a freelancer, you know, you can position yourself as a specialist to get a lot of money for projects that don't take you necessarily very long to do. So I'm going to be talking about this more inside my uh, Blockchain Mastery University. The doors are going to open on January 29th, 2020. All right, I've got a link down below where you can sign up. So I'm going to be inside of there helping you crush your goals as a blockchain developer. I'm going to take you over the shoulder and uh, show you some of the projects that I work on, like maybe explain more in detail about how I did this. You know, what was the project? Um, what was the code like? Like, what did I have to do, right? I'm going to be talking about those kinds of things. All right, so I hope you all like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below, and mark your calendars for January 29th. All right, that's when uh, the door to Blockchain Mastery University open. So keep an eye on your email inbox. I'm going to be sending out some surveys because I want to create this program just for you and I want your feedback. All right. So again, mark your calendars and until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.